after over 800 years since it was destroyed pm modi has now inaugurated world's oldest residential university the nalanda university now nalanda university was the oldest residential university in the world and it was built during the 5th century roughly around 427 ce during the rule of emperor kumara gupta of the gupta dynasty not only was the nalanda university a prominent university in india but asia and around the world as well as it catered to over 10000 students and 2000 teachers from all walks of life and from all the places around the world there were students from places like china japan tibet mongolia korea and parts of southeast asia so you can just imagine the kind of influence this university had on students back then what's even more interesting is the fact that aryabhatta the inventor of zero and one of the brightest minds to have ever lived on earth was also a mentor at this university during the 6th century but do you know what the prized possession of nalanda university was its library which was home to over 9 million books and manuscripts which ranged from religion to science and medicine you can only imagine the kind of richness of knowledge this place was surrounded by nalanda university was a buddhist monastery and a prominent center of knowledge in asia which taught subjects like buddhism astronomy mathematics philosophy grammar and medicine and it is also believed that the original manuscripts of the upanishads were also present here and education was free of cost so it was free of cost to study at this university however the process of interview at this university to get admitted into this university was rigorous the nalanda university thrived for about 8 centuries before it was destroyed in 1193 by the turkish general of qutbuddin aybak bakhtiyar khilji however this was not the first and the only time that the nalanda university was actually attacked it was actually the third attack on the university the very first time that this university was attacked was during 455 AD to 470 AD and it was attacked by a central asian tribe known as hunas and this central asian tribe actually invaded india during the 4th and the 6th century under the gupta empire rule talking about the second time that it was attacked it was during the 7th century and it was attacked by bengal's godas rajwansh now both of these times the university was rebuilt because it was not an irreparable damage however when it was destroyed in 1193 by bakhtiyar khilji the damage was irreparable bakhtiyar khilji killed thousands of monks that were present at the university and destroyed the university the library of the university that contained 9 million books and manuscripts 9 million manuscripts and books containing ancient science history religion and medicine they were burnt do not mistake these books to be ancient as they were believed to be far advanced at that point of time and these books could have had a major impact not just on the growth and economy of india but of asia as a whole because all the students who came here from different parts of asia from china japan and southeast asia they were studying here they went back to their respective countries and had those books not been destroyed and burnt more of those students could have come and graduated from this university gone back and changed the course of their respective countries not just india but around the world we can we can only imagine the kind of knowledge and richness those books possessed and this is clear from the fact that these books were not burnt in one day it took over 3 months to actually burn all the books down of this university but why did bakhtiyar khilji actually attack and destroy the nalanda university now it is unclear as to why bakhtiyar khilji actually carried out the attack on nalanda university but here are some possible reasons that many believe could have led bakhtiyar khilji to make that particular move now it is believed that there were two possible reasons behind bakhtiyar khilji's decision to attack this university now the first reason is said to be that bakhtiyar khilji was actually on a quest to search for quran in india at the nalanda university and he was unable to find quran and as a result in anger and frustration he carried out the attacks at the nalanda university thereby destroying the university as a whole and the second reason is believed to be that the core teachings of buddhism they were in a way competing with the teachings of islam and also bakhtiyar khilji did not want people to learn about ayurveda and in order to not let the teachings of buddhism and ayurveda reach more and more people he carried out those attacks at the university and destroyed and burnt those books in a fit of rage and anger khilji destroyed what could have been pivotal in the growth and trajectory of india fast forward to 2006 the then indian president dr apj abdul kalam actually proposed the idea of the reconstruction of Nala 
Nalanda University. And in 2010, the Nalanda University Bill was passed, declaring Nalanda University an institution of national importance. This led to the launch of Nalanda University in 2014 at a temporary location. And then finally, in 2017, the construction of this university began, which led to its inauguration on June 19th, 2024, by the Prime Minister of India. Now, talking about the new campus, it is roughly situated at about less than 20 kilometers from the actual site of ancient ruins of the Nalanda University. Not only that, but this new campus is home to eco-friendly infrastructure and is aimed to use solar plants as well as domestic and drinking water treatment facilities and other forms of eco-friendly systems to have this place running. It is self-sustainable. When we talk about the campus, there are two blocks that are constructed which have 40 classrooms with a seating capacity of 1900 students at the university. When we talk about the library of this university, once completed in September, it will have a capacity for 300,000 books. And as of now, the university has six schools teaching Buddhist studies, historical studies, ecology, sustainable development, languages, literature, and international relations. Now, this university also hosts four centers, including Bay of Bengal studies, Indo-Persian studies, conflict resolution, and a common archival resource center. Now that the new campus of Nalanda University is built, PM Modi has said, that golden era of India starts with the rebuilding of Nalanda. He also said that he wants India to become a global hub for knowledge and education. So now the question here is, will Nalanda change the course of India's education? Will Nalanda University become a global center of education just like it was in the 5th century? We will have to wait it out and see how it turns out for India. But as of now, it is a start and a hope for India to restore its glory. With that being said, do let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Do you think that India will become a global hub for education? If you found this video valuable, please share it with your friends and family and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.